My name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here GMAT Review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number. 275 and today is our lesson number two on page 275 is the beginning of the data sufficiency questions the very first question on data sufficiency questions before I start actually before I actually start solving this question I just want to remind you that if you haven't if you haven't had the chance to watch the introduction make sure that you watch the introduction just type in my name Kashwani and then type in GMAT data sufficiency intro make sure you watch that video first so that you can understand the strategy as to what we're going to do here I'm not going to explain everything again just watch that video make sure you understand it how to lay out, lay out this uh, format of the uh, what the layout of the of the of these questions uh, is and how to go about tackling them let's take a look at the first question the question is what is the value of the absolute what is the absolute value of x that's what they're asking here what is the absolute value of x the first statement tells us the first statement tells us that x equals negative of some negative of the absolute value of x what does it mean it's a well I, I forgot something before we do anything at all this is what we do we write down a d b c e always as soon as the data sufficient as soon as the data sufficiency question pops on the screen you must write down a d b c e okay let's take a look at it what does this tell you well, we know that absolute value of any number, absolute value, absolute value of any number is a positive quantity, which was a silly thing for me to write because that's exactly what absolute value means. But then it has a negative in front of it. Then it has a negative in front of it. So if this is a positive quantity, if this is a positive quantity and it's got a negative in front of it that tells us that x whatever it is is some negative number that's what it tells us one more time absolute value of anything is a positive quantity which is what absolute value means but then they tell us that there's a negative sign in front of us that tells us that the x whatever it is is some negative number and that is all the first statement tells us first statement tells us that x is some negative number in other words x is less than zero and that's all we can infer from the first statement now is that enough to answer the question that is being asked the question being asked is what is the absolute value of x well if you ask me what is the absolute value of x and then you go around and then you turn around and tell me that x is something less than zero my my answer to that question would be how the hell do i know all i know is that is x is less than zero how do i know what x is i need to know what x is exactly precisely before we can answer the question, what is the absolute value of x? The first statement by itself is not enough. The first statement by itself is not enough. That means we can cross out A and we can cross out D. Answer whatever it is, it's got to be either B, C, or E. Let's look at second statement. Second statement tells us, second statement tells us that x squared equals 4. Aha! x squared equals 4. That tells us that x must be either positive 2 or negative 2. Because the square of positive 2 is 4 and so is the square of negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. That tells us that x is either positive 2 or negative 2. It doesn't matter whether x is positive 2 or negative 2. The absolute value of x whether it's positive 2 or negative 2, it doesn't matter. We are able to answer the question, what is the absolute value of x? Well, absolute value of x is 2. Absolute value of x is 2. We, don't need, we do not need to know exactly what x is, whether it's positive 2 or negative 2. As long as we know that it's either one or the other, as long as we know that x is either positive 2 or negative 2, which is what the second statement tells us, that is enough for us to answer the question what's the absolute value of x the absolute value of x is 2 second statement by itself does the job the answer is b the answer is b 
Let's make a note here. The answer is B. Void is absolute value of x. The answer turns out to be B. I want to put it, I want to put it aside there. I want to make a note of it. Because now I'm going to give you a new question, a bonus question. A bonus question. I'm going to quickly turn the page, make sure that we haven't made a boo boo. Yes, answer is, answer is in fact B. I just check in the back. Let's have a new question, shall we? I'm going to give you a brand new question. Okay, a bonus question. Let's do one more. Let's do one more question. This is not question number one. This is bonus. And the question is what is. What is x. It's a new question. This is not in the book. The first statement I'm given, the first statement that is given to us is x equals negative of some absolute number, absolute value of x. Again, without going into the all that detail that we already went through, what this tells us is that x is some negative number. That's all it tells us. First statement tells us that x is some negative number. So let's put down here A, D, B, C, E. Again, I'm reminding you, if you do not know what the hell I just did here, watch the video. It will make sense to you. A, D, B, C, E. Every time, every single time, the data sufficiency question pops up on the screen, you must write down on the scratch paper, A, D, B, C, E. So that should be your mantra. It should become a second nature. By the time you're ready to sit for the exam, it should become your second nature day after taking the exam or an hour after take, having taken the exam if you want to forget the bloody thing that's fine but right before the exam it should become your second nature A D B C E so first let me by itself does not do the job all we can tell is that it's some negative number we do not we cannot answer the question what exactly x is first statement does not do the job answer cannot be A nor can it be D it's got to be either B C or E let's look at second statement Second statement tells us that x squared is equal to 4, which implies that x is either positive 2 or negative 2. Well, again, all we know from the second statement is that x is either positive 2 or negative 2. We cannot answer the question what x is precisely. All we know at this point from the second statement, all we know is that, it's, that this bloody thing is either positive 2 or negative 2. We cannot answer exactly what it is. The second statement is also not enough by itself. Answer cannot be B. Answer is going to be either C or E. Let's put them together. 1 and 2. Now, I'm not going to put anything on the blackboard. I'm just going to talk to you. I'm not going to put anything on the blackboard. The first statement tells us, the first statement tells us that X is negative. The second statement tells us that X is either positive 2 or negative 2. What happens if we put these two, two bits of information together? Well, there you go. Now we can do the job. Now we can answer the question, what is the value of x? The value of x must be negative 2. Must be negative 2. Because the second statement tells us that it's either positive 2 or negative 2. And the first statement tells us for a fact that whatever the hell it is, it's a negative number. Well, if it's a negative number and it's either positive or negative 2, it's going to be negative 2. That's it. So both statements together, do the job. In this scenario, the answer is C. The answer is C. The way the question was given in the book, the way the question is given in the book, the answer is B. The way I put down the question without the absolute sign, the entire scenario changes, the entire situation changes. This is the entirely different ball game. Do you understand? I don't know where the ball game came from. This is the entirely different uh, game. This is an entirely different uh, scenario, entirely different situation. In this case, the answer is, what, did you, what was the answer? In this case, the answer is C. C means that if you put the information from the first statement and the second statement together, both statements put together will do the job. Will be, we will be able to answer the, answer the question that is being asked, which is, what is x? x is negative 2. Alright? I'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.